Well, in our genome, you inherit an, uh, one copy from the mom and one from the father. And you know, of those genes, they're called autosomal genes. They're not talking about the sex chromosomes, but the autosomal genes. Usually when they're, when they're functioning, both copies are working. <clears throat> but there's a subset of genes in our genome in which only one copy works. And that copy for the genes that are called genomically imprinted are, is either expressed from the mother or from the father, depending upon the gene. Now, if you think about this, this is basically very, very dangerous because a single, a single genetic mutation or a single epigenetic event or, or change because the silencing of that one copy is epigenetic, it's programming, can completely dysregulate the functions of these, of these genes because you have no backup. So this is an effect like having a computer and never making a backup of that computer. Now, I know none of us ever do that, but uh, you understand how vulnerable that really is. And we have, we guesstimate right now, about one to 200 of these genes in our genome. So they're not just trivial numbers of them, there's a lot of them. So the question is why evolutionarily would you ever have something this nutty evolving in our genome? And we found that the only animals that have imprinted genes are animals that give rise and have live birth and have placentas. So anything that's more ancestral to that does not have imprinted genes. So it's only what are called the Therian mammals, which are marsupials and the group that we're in, which are eutherian mammals. Just those two groups of animals that we know of in, in the world have imprinted genes. So why would they evolve? So there's a lot of reasons why people have come up as why they might be advantageous. But the one that's most interesting to most people is that at this point of the game, there's probably no advantage at all of them, but they're merely a remnant of a genetic battle between males and females to control the amount of nutrients that the offspring extracts from the mother, with the father trying to maximize that extraction and the mother trying to dampen it down. So it's a battle. So where is the battleground? The battleground is where the nutrition is being extracted, the placenta. And the other place that could potentially be a battleground, but it would occur after birth, is the brain itself. And these are the two tissues in us and all eutherian animals where you have the most imprinted genes being expressed. It also makes the prediction then that any animal that lays eggs would not have imprinted genes. And this is how we got into this field of research. And we demonstrated that indeed that's the case because when a mother lays an egg, the father has no way of, con no way of determining and controlling what nutrition the mother puts in that egg. So the end part of this then is how is this involved in, in, in diseases? If, and in this case, the silence is epigenetic, this is a programming phenomenon. So when the programs are deregulated, you now are going to have developmental problems. And that's what shows up both in neurological disorders, diabetes, obesity, etc. So they play huge important roles in all of these chronic disorders that we have that we really haven't found the reason for why we have them yet.